In this segment, I'll be looking at the basic statistics that one could calculate on this data that would produce, say, a sufficient telling of the story. I'm going to have to make a copy of the document and lower right I'm going to use the app to edit it. I can't edit it from this canvas embedded window. I'm going to make myself some space down here to work in. I'm going to clear this and I'm going to go ahead and clear the formatting of this uh, clear out all formatting just as a precaution since there's text there before it'll carry some format with it. I want to, probably the first thing I want to look at is whether there's a difference in this pile of numbers. I don't want to make a chart of all the data. That would be a, uh, that wouldn't tell anybody anything. It'll make a mess basically. It'll, it'll be a chart with a lot of columns and a lot of different values and it won't tell people the story of the data. Telling the story statistically is going to mean finding some way to summarize this data and statistics are very good at summarizing. The count would be a, a good place uh, to summarize but they all have the same count. They all have these 10 values so that's not going to tell me much. A often good statistic uh, a good starting place, at least frequently in statistics, is the average. Let's take a look at the average and see what we have here. I'm gonna, oh, if you mess up, just go back like I do regularly. I do need to get rid of that comma. That won't work. So I've got the average A to A1. It's interesting. Drag it across to the perutually. I resize the column so I can kind of see everything. Tap on that blue. And uh, let's see, autofill. And there we go. Autofill the cross. So those are the averages for each trench. Okay. Of course, now those numbers are just kind of floating down there. Can't tell which belongs to which trench. So let me go ahead and grab this. Tap, copy, come back here. Tap, paste. Better. Now I can see which belongs to which. And that's a, a good starting place right there. You've got the averages. Uh, you could copy that as a table to, uh, to a presentation. That'll be a later segment. But you could copy that if you wished. A even stronger visual presentation for many people would be to select those two and add a graph. Let's add a chart. Ah, but I only see five columns. Japan, Kermadec, Mariana, Hindu, Hebrides, and Peru, Chile. Izubonin, at the bottom there, has wound up on the horizontal x-axis as a title. That's incorrect. So I, I need to do one small change. And this is unique to the Google Sheets app. This won't occur for people using the laptop. I'll go to A. I'll go to plus at the top. And I'll come down to insert column left. And I'll add to this uh, what I think of as sort of a, as a, uh, a filler column. It's a, a space taker. But I'll go ahead and give it a name. Uh, these are the names of the trenches in this row. And down here what I've put in is the mean. The average or mean value. With that uh, filler row there, if you will. Uh, I can now select, eh, I need one more, over to Peru, Chile. Go to plus, add chart, and now I have all six of the trenches. That's good. I don't need a legend. The legend says mean, and the y-axis says mean, so it's redundant. I don't need that. So I've got that. I also want to take a look at that title. The chart title, that doesn't make much sense. This is the average or mean number of uh, plastic. Let me move that out of the way. It's always somehow in the way. Plastic 
particles per trench. Update that. That's a more meaningful title. With that, I've done pretty much everything I can do from this particular app. Uh, that gets me the a good chart to start with. It's a little too big, but uh, I can uh, can I think quite. Yeah. I work on it. I can shrink it back a little. I it's I could change the size of the screen, but if I do that, the words will get unusually small, and it will be harder to see the labels if I zoom out with my spreadsheet at this point. That's a good chart. This would be a sufficient start to the assignment. In this second segment, I'm going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the Mariana Trench data. I'm going to drop down a couple of rows from my trenches averages because if I continue in row 15, uh, Google Sheets will automatically add whatever I'm doing to the chart down there. And I don't want it to add what I'm about to do to the chart. So I'm going to first work on constructing a 95% confidence interval for this data. And the first thing I'll need is the count for the data up here. Uh, that extra comma, delete that. That will just uh, make things not work well. One of the things I can probably do here is, not quite, let me try it again. Yeah, a little tricky, but I think I can, yep, yeah, copy that. You'll see where I'm going in a moment. I'll go ahead and redo the mean down here. And I'll put in equals the average. Only this time I'm going to delete those and see if I can drop that thing in. Yes, that's right. I'm going to add the standard deviation. I label them so I can see what I'm doing. I need the standard deviation equals S T D E V. Again, I'm going to drop those. Again, I'm going to paste that in. It's just easier than point and click when you're on a uh, the standard error, SE. I'll leave it lowercase, but I usually on a whiteboard would use uppercase. That's equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Standard deviation by the square root of the sample size. Whoops. I'll go back and fix it. Too many parentheses. There we go. And I'll look at that for a moment to see that it makes sense. The square root of 10 is 3. 2 divided by 3. That makes sense. About 2, th two divided by 3, about 2 thirds, which is 0.667. So that makes some sense. That's, that's reasonable. That's my standard error. Now I'll need the T critical, which is going to be for chapter 9.2, will be the T inverse of... 1 minus 0 0.95, my confidence level, comma, N minus 1. I've already got a closed parenthesis, about 2.26 for my T critical. Now I'll want my lower bound on the confidence interval. So I'll go ahead and enter a lower bound. I'll go to a lower to remind myself of what this is. The lower bound is the mean. That's the middle. The mean is the middle. Minus two standard errors multiplied by the uh, t-critical. Let me take the t-critical times the, uh, sorry, not two, times the standard error. Just t-critical times the standard error. That's all. Why did I say two? Because t-critical is two. 2.26. So it's 2.26 times 0.667. That's the lower bound. The upper bound on this confidence interval the upper bound is just going to be the middle, which is the mean, tap on the mean, plus the T critical, be careful where you tap, times the standard error. 4.8. 
So the confidence interval for the Marianas Trench, and I can make this a little stretched out some, the confidence interval for the Marianas Trench is runs from 1.7 to 4.8. Think in terms of a number line. That's 9.2. Now I'm going to move to chapter 10.1. I'm going to put in the point estimate of the population mean. Let's try that again. The point estimate of the population mean. Uh -huh. Autocorrect to the rescue. I don't want to autocorrect that. Point estimate of the mean. Leave it that way. The point estimate. The best point estimate I've got of the population mean is going to be just equal to the average of all my data. This all the way over to Peru. I get to Peru? I got the Peru. So from B2 to G11. That's my best estimate of population mean. Check. 1.46 is the population mean. It's not in the interval. It's below the interval. And so that tells me that, I'll move that down a bit, that tells me that the population mean plastic particle count for the Mariana Trench, the possible average for all the amphipods in that trench, is between 1.79 and 4.8. That does not include 1.46. So I already know I have a statistically significant result. This using the techniques of 9 and... Uh, uh, 9.2, sorry, just 9.2 and 10.1. You can draw a little number line if you want. Not easy to draw here, but you have to imagine a 1.79 and a 4.8. Uh, and that will get you that uh, conclusion. So that's chapter 9.2. Maybe I better put that up here. 9.2 and 10.1. 10.1. The techniques of. This would be an optimal solution. It's not the only way to solve this, but it is an optimal solution. It is good enough. Um, make that line up and make it look like a header. That's one of the optimal solutions. And you, this would be fully, more than sufficient this would be optimal if you have this chart this table of data and, and this results here and you explain it to your audience you can say look the Mariana Trench is significant has significantly more plastic so maybe make it a little colorful to distinguish it what colors do I have oh, gee. oh yeah that's what you just there we go there's something light yeah oh that's pretty there you go. That looks like New Hebrides, so you come back over here. It's hard to find a color that's not being used. There we go. In this segment, I'm going to take a look at Chapter 10.2 techniques for the same thing I did in the previous segment on 9.2 and 10.1. You don't have to do both. Different... There are just two different ways to get to the same answer. Let me go ahead and call this 10.2. Uh, 10.2. Wow. 10.2. Hypothesis test. This is the hypothesis test approach. The one above was the um, confidence interval approach and the confidence interval test. This will have the same answer. We won't get a different answer. But it's another way to do this. I'm going to start off with T-critical. That's going to be useful in the hypothesis test. T-critical is going to be equal to the T-inverse of alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. Not 1 minus alpha. No. Now, I already have N, so I'll just to grab that N. Minus 1. It should be no surprise that the T-critical is exactly the same as I got before. No change. What's new, of course, in 10.2 is T. So, let's 
calculate T, the T statistic. The T statistic is equal to parentheses, very important, the mean for the trench minus the point estimated population mean divided by the standard error. So I already have those, so I can calculate this real easy. And look, the T statistic is bigger than T critical. That means we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis being there's no difference between these trenches. There is a difference. The same result we got here. The same result. But you could have gone to this result straight from the data up here without constructing this confidence interval. And some people like this approach better because it just gives them two numbers to look at. Whereas here I'm looking at three, no, I was looking at three different numbers to see that the confidence interval could not include the point estimate. I can figure that out, but I have to rearrange them in, in pieces, sort of like say, well, this one is down there. And the 1.4 is low. Or, sorry, that should be, that should be, my bet, should be equal to 1.4 is low and so it's more complicated for some people to think about this 1.79 goes there and the upper bound is equal to this so for some people that's more complicated to think about here's my 95 percent confidence interval and it does not include the 1.46 10.2 gets us two numbers the bigger number tells us what to do the t statistic is bigger we reject this then also leads directly into 10.3, which of course is the p-value chapter where we looked at, should we be surprised? I think you should know what the answer is. We've already rejected this, so we should be surprised. But you can calculate a p-value, and many scientific studies report a p-value. To get that p-value, all I have to do is take the t-distribution of I'll use the absolute value function to make sure I grabbed an absolute value of t. The function fails if you don't. It reminds me of what I need next. I need the degrees of freedom. Those are back here. 10 minus 1. The s always minus 1 for us in this class. And there you go. Two tails. Always two tails. 0 0.02. It's less than 0 0.05. <gasps> We're surprised. So we can reject the null hypothesis. This result for the Mariana Trench is different. Again, you don't have to do all of these. 10.2 um, is fine. 9.2 is fine. Whatever you choose to do, that's just fine. Each of these is a different way to get to the same answer. There's no fast way to get to the p-value. You still have to construct t. But once you have t, you could go to the p-value, and you would no longer need to look at t-critical because the p-value tells you t-critical will be bigger than the t-critical. So it is a third way to get to the answer. All three of these would be optimal statistical analyses. 9-2, 10-2, 10-3. You can't do ones from chapter 11 because chapter 11 only taught us how to do two. And there's six. So none of these techniques of chapter 11 are going to easily apply up here because... You'd have to compare them to what? Each other. It just doesn't make sense. So we have six columns. We've got to use one of our more basic techniques that you see here. In this segment, I'm going to look at moving data from my spreadsheet to my presentation. This takes a little bit more work on a cell phone. I have already done a screen capture and crop of this chart already. I can't show you how to do that. A, every phone is different. B, when I do it on this phone, you won't see it because I'm already screen capturing the screen to make this movie. And so you can't see a screen capture of a screen capture. But I did screen capture and then I cropped this. My particular phone lets me crop my screen captures. If you don't have that ability, you'll have to use something like Snapseed or Google Photos or your other favorite on-phone photo editor to edit your 
graph down to just a graph but I've already got that saved to my phone as a screen capture but I am going to also grab the trench data because I'm going to bring this over as a table Not too far no, that's okay bring it back it's hard to bring back um, really hard to bring back there we go now I gotta bring it down once I get it right I tap on it and I copy it so now I've got my table of data and I've already saved my screen capture so I'm going to go ahead and go to my slides and I'll go ahead and make a new presentation uh, probably should have a title plastic you think of your own creative title plastic in the trenches Just for fun, I'll probably give it a theme. Just to also make it look nicer if I have some kind of theme on this thing. Yeah, so many. Mm. Uh, let's see. Hey, doesn't matter which we use. Should look somewhat formal, probably, and it should look like plastic. I don't know. It looks plastic. Let's try that. <laughs> there we go. I won't even add a subtitle. I'm going to add in that table let's see if I can do that here oops sorry almost paste there's my table it's a little small and the fonts a little problematic but I can make it bigger and I can fix the font that'll take a bit more creativity but down here uh, sorry, at the top, under font, text, size, I can bring this up in size. That's better, so that people can see it a little easier. And in fact, uh, if I just do that, then I can learn to play with your technology. There you go, look at that. Bring those guys up so people can see them. And this up here, I'm going to add a title, of course. It's going to be the Mean Plastic Particles Per Trench. Don't include the raw data. We almost never put the raw data in a presentation. Almost never. That's a, a good table. I'm going to add another one of the same type. This one, same title, basically. Uh mean particles, but I'm going to add that chart. The chart helps tell a story. The chart helps tell a story. To add the chart, though, I'm going to use the plus sign at the top. Uh, a student once asked, there's no plus sign on my laptop. No. In a laptop, you have to use the insert menu, and it'll say insert chart, and you can insert directly from your spreadsheet. You don't have to screen capture. So again, this is harder because it isn't obvious how to get these things done. There's my graph. <laughs> I've got a lot of them. But there's my graph. Get that put in. I've got six columns. That's a good graph. It tells a story. I now do need some kind of a conclusion. Probably a title and body slide. It looks like this. That's going to have my discussion and conclusion. Discussion. It's got a discussion and conclusion and then in here I'm going to tell them what I'm going to tell them now this is not complete at this point this is a sufficient solution to the problem it has basic statistics chapter 3 uh, chapter 2 2.1 it has a chapter 3 histogram it's a nominal level histogram that's fine that shows us not that sorry not a histogram technically sorry it's a chart of the mean number of particles per trench more accurately but it tells us something it tells us the story that Marianas is larger it is not an optimal solution to the problem but it is sufficient and uh, later on I'll show you 
why I'm using those terms. This is sufficient, though. This shows me that you can do basic statistics and make a meaningful chart. You can tell the story. You will need to discuss what those results mean. But to really tell the story, you need to include a statistic. You can't just say the Marianas Trench has more plastic. In statistics, there's a fuzziness here. We have to prove that it has more plastic and that that difference is statistically significant. Now, there are probably a couple different ways to do this. One would be to maybe do a split chart. And then uh, you have the three options that have been outlined earlier on in the uh, earlier segments. Uh, you probably want to grab one of these options and talk about it. Uh, I wouldn't grab all of the data, and I'd probably do something like, let's take this stuff, tap, cut, let's bring it over where it should be, paste, all right. And so I'd have here maybe this data set, yeah. Bring this over, tap, copy, switch back, drop that in. Uh, it's going to need some work. Fine. Uh, something like that, that's so good. Oh. But it will definitely need some uh, font work there. I probably should have rounded the numbers off. I shouldn't let it fall off the chart, but I probably should have rounded off the numbers. I didn't need to grab this row. That was probably a mistake. But I'll take that out. That will just confuse the audience. But over here I can explain that the 95% confidence interval, which is there, and again, I can... I can increase certain sizes. I should have rounded these off. I didn't. But um, there's the, the values. I can now explain here that the 95% confidence interval does not include the point estimate population mean of 1.46. And it's statistically significantly different. I could also instead copy the other. This piece, this statistical significance piece, let me go ahead and Double tap that in. The statistical significance, statistical significance, statistic, statistical, significance. I can then talk about that here, that this difference is statistically significant because the 95% confidence interval for the Mariana Trench does not include the point estimate for a population mean of 1.46. Or you could use the Chapter 10.2 hypothesis test data here, or you could talk about a p-value that you did a, a calculated t-statistic, which you should report, and the p-value, which you should report, at 0.02, that could go on this slide too. This takes a sufficient presentation and turns it into an optimal presentation. You have now proven statistically that there's no way that the Mariana Trench plastic particle mean could be from the same mean, from the same population as the other trenches. The Mariana Trench doesn't just have more plastic, it has statistically significantly more plastic. There'll be one more step to this that I'll need to do because I'm working on a phone. Once I have finished my presentation, and it's not done yet, I have a lot more text to add. I've got to put in a little text to explain what it is uh, to the audience, especially since you know, on an assignment like this, you can present it by Zoom. But if you don't Zoom it and you just send it to someone, then you're going to have to have an explanation so they can know what your presentation is about. They might be just looking through the presentation. Some of your teachers might be doing this. They put up a presentation. You go through it. You've got to have an explanation in there. You must have the explanation. So make sure the explanation is somewhere in there. 
and probably should be big enough that somebody can read it, whatever it is. But once I've got all of this done, I'm not done. I have one more thing that has to happen. I have to go back at the top left on the arrow. That's my presentation. Back one more time. And when I get to this screen, this is the slides home screen. I didn't give it a name. That's my fault. I want to download it. Don't save it as a PowerPoint. I want to download it to my phone. That will then download this to my phone. Next, we'll look at how I can submit it now that I've downloaded it. In this segment, I'll look at submitting my assignment. So, let me go find my assignment. Uh, it should be 12.1. Scroll on, there's my 12.1. Yeah, it's missing, I haven't submitted it yet. So I'll go to Submit Assignment at the bottom of the screen, File Upload. At the bottom right, Device. Device. And I didn't title it, that's my fault. <laughs> I should have titled my presentation. But it's this top, I know it's that top left one, the way my file system works. So I'll just select that. That's the one I want to upload. It's a select at the top right. Untitled presentation. I should have given it a title. All right, submit it. And it will upload it and submit my file for me. And there's, there it is submitted. If I want to see what I've submitted, there's a right arrow partway down on the right side. If I click on that arrow, it will show me what I've submitted so I could actually check to make sure I've submitted the right assignment because I was using an untitled presentation. There's my first slide, there's my second slide, my third slide, my fourth slide, and my unfinished uh, last slide there. So you can see what I'll see. This is what I will see when I, well, this is what I see when I finish mine and submit it. Here's should be more complete. When I go to mark this, I'll be using a rubric. You'll see things like 150.1. That's the first learning outcome in the class, that you can do basic statistical calculations. That's, so can you show me that you calculated a mean or a standard deviation? Um, just showing me that you did the mean, see back here, I can see you could calculate the mean. I have the ability to optimal, sufficient, suboptimal, or no evidence. But for this one, could you be you able to calculate basic statistics? Yeah. In fact, the mean is a really good choice. Optimal. For three, uh, you can read three. Engage in data exploration. That's going to depend on how I mark three, one, three, two, and three, three. Did you report appropriate statistics? If all you did was report the mean, you'll see that here. Generally basic without specific guidance. If all you did is, is report the mean, for this particular one, for 3, 1, that's going to be sufficient. If you went uh, farther, uh, it might be a little bit closer to optimal, but this would be op sufficient or optimal. I think with the mean, it would be probably optimal for 3, 1. The chart, that's a fine chart. And it's 3, 3. 3, 3 is draw conclusions based on the statistical analyses and tests. Tests, as in hypothesis tests or confidence intervals. This one... If you didn't have that slide that's here, then 3.3 three, uh, would be suboptimal because you haven't really reported a result. You haven't analyzed the data. You reported a st statistic, and that's fine, but you haven't really analyzed the data. So I would probably mark this one this way up if I didn't have this slide. But with this slide statistical significance and a good description on the last slide, this would be optimal. This would be optimal. There are some in-between ones and they could land at sufficient. But if you didn't have some kind of a statistical test, then this one would probably be suboptimal because all you've given me is a basic statistic, chapter 3, chapter 2, and chapter 3 chart. Uh, and I want to see you use something from the the latter part of the course, the 9, 10, 
possibly 11 depending on it or chapter 4 um, also will report into this 3.3 .3. but you can see how I'll be marking them that's a rubric so all I do is tap these circles and so I'll, once I've got that like if this one had all of those all well, those all be five then this one which is the overall for these three will reflect those and so that's a, a, that one is fine although it needs this discussion and conclusion finished this thing goes up and down on my screen so yours may be similar uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't actually be marking it <laughs> but I'm showing you what the marking is when I mark it that's what I get to see uh, on the rubric um, I don't think you'll be actually marking it but you could try any comments you have could go right here so that's all there is to submitting these particular assignments you're submitting a presentation and I'll be marking the presentation you can do this.